Hello there, good day and welcome to Go On The Run. And today I want to wrap up what we've been playing with, which is NAS streaming. And that is not because there is more to cover on NAS, but remember, I'm just giving you a taste to try and get you excited about NAS because I want to do a much longer series on NAS later when I move and I get back to having a better setup and have more time. So, um, so far, this is the miscellaneous stuff and the purpose of it is to either tease you with new things to come or go back and revisit some other things or explore just new ideas, right? So um, so we're gonna wrap up here with Nats today. So that's the, that, that's the intent of this video. So before we jump into the video, um, I've been having a lot of questions recently on the channel about why I name more um, subscribers and the videos don't have more views and all that stuff. And I've tried to answer this a few times and I don't know that I actually know the answer to that. That's the truth. Instead of just answering it, you know, replying to those people who ask, I just answer it on the video. Um, I think there are multiple components to why the channel is probably not as popular as some of you think it should be. And I certainly would like it to be. Um, from one, you know, maybe the title and subject for the videos are not as attention grabbing, or maybe they're not um, done in a way that allow them to be found in searches. Maybe the engagement is not as high that would allow the YouTube algorithm to pick them up. So that's one of the reasons why I ask you to please engage with the video. If you like the material and you would like to see the channel grow and want other people who even people you don't know to access this material, then we need some more engagement on the videos. And that means that I'll definitely make sure to, if you're listening to this, and you like the content that you're subscribed, you hit the notification bell, and also that you're um, doing thumbs up and commenting on the videos, right? So if you don't have time to do a comment, do definitely do a thumbs up or whatever. I like a thumbs up, but if you feel that it wasn't good enough, instead of just leaving a thumbs down, leave a comment so I can know what is it that you didn't like or appreciate or something like that, right? And then I can work on it. Just blindly leaving a thumbs down doesn't help anyone. So engagement, but it's not all on you, like I said, may not probably come um, edit put in the, the correct subject not correct but you know putting in um, the type of subject that would be able to allow it to be get attention and so on at first i used to say that it's because i don't post as consistently but i realized after thinking about the last question about this i realized that i don't think that's the case because there was a time when i was posting three times a week and still the channel would it's growing and still growing. We still get new subscribers. Didn't to me grow any faster. So that wasn't it. I think it's just a matter of exposure. I think um, some, some people are just lucky to be able to come out and be able to grab the attention. And then I think the channel name, certainly um, probably not the easiest to connect with Go and so on. So maybe if I name the channel like Go Stuff or Go Learn or Go On The Run, the channel itself as opposed to the playlist, because remember on this channel, I have several playlists. So I've been thinking about breaking out the playlist into their own channels. And so um, maybe that would help. But anyway, I thought I would address that question here. If you have any ideas on how we can grow the channel, please um, let me know <laughs> if you can help in some way, whatever way that is, let me know. And, um, um, and so we can see how we can do it. Okay, so with that said, hopefully um, that answers that question and you are now a subscriber um, as you listen to me talk about this and how we can possibly, some of the things we can do. Okay, let's jump into the material and talk about Nat's request response messages and how that is different from what we were doing. I'll show you the problem and then we'll talk about the solution. What I wanna cover in this wrap up video on Nat's is um, something that may be a little bit strange if you try to roll out a solution and wasn't aware of it. Now, again, there are many other things um, available in NATS message um, that built in the NATS um, platform. I'm going to call it platform because they're like the NATS um, messaging server that we've been playing with. On top of this, there's NATS Jetstream, which is the same binary, um, just use an option to enable. And there's like WebSocket, which is also um, built into NATS, it's MQTT. So a lot of things that sort of built on, on top of NATS by the same people. So it's like a separate project or anything. And so um, there are other things to cover. We can cover all of that later on when we actually do NATS. So why is it important that I show you this thing about 
um, the caveat basically about how Nats does things. Well, one of the things that I probably mentioned in the first video is Nats messaging is very, very, very fast. As you can see, it's very simplistic. It's, you know, you just start sending a message to some string topic and the message is just a slice of bytes. That's it. So one of the things that can happen is because Nats doesn't store your message, if there's a subscriber there waiting to receive your message, Nats would deliver it to that subscriber and that's it and forgets about it. And if there are no subscriber, it just simply drops the message. But that is not all. You can have a subscription to Nats on a topic and messages could be sent to that topic and still you miss the message as a subscriber. That's because Nats doesn't do a guaranteed delivery. What it does is by default, Nats does at most once delivery. That's really important. I'm going to say this again. Nat does at most once delivery. And the importance there of the at most once, if you look at it, at most once, it's saying, I guarantee that at most one time this message is going to be delivered. That's just at the most. This the least, which it could be zero, which means that a message could possibly not get delivered. You may be thinking, wait a second, Farrell. You tell me that this message in application is so awesome and it's fast and everything, but then there's a possibility that I could miss messages? Absolutely. And let me show you the problem first and then I'll talk about this, a way to solve it. So what I have is just NAT server. I just ran NAT server on my desktop here. I'm not doing Docker or anything, just simply run it. I show you how you can install NAT server for every platform. And so that's running locally on my system. And here I'm in miscellaneous directory and I'm gonna copy our code from before. So I'm gonna copy project two, I'm gonna call it project three or part three, whatever you wanna call that. And so there we go, let's get into that directory. And okay, so I'm gonna get into that directory. And the reason why I have my screen split is because I'm gonna have in one of these screen, I'm going to, um, this terminal window, I'm gonna run my publisher and I'm gonna run my subscriber. So let me start off the Visual Studio Code Editor. So let's get that going. And so if we look at our subscriber here, code, we can see that we have subscribed to anything on this event topic or, you know, any subtopic for events. And I'm just going to sit there and loop around um, and get messages and print them out. Okay. So I don't need this piece of code here. Now, before we were sleeping one minute and then we would um, quit. I don't know how long, you know, it's got how many messages we can accept in that time. And so what I want to do is change things a little bit. I want to keep a count of how many messages we've received. So I'm going to do count is equals to zero. And that is pretty easy. I can just go in here and say every time we get a message, do count plus plus. Okay, I'll keep fingers on that on the right um, thing. So count plus plus. There we go. And now that I'm getting a count of my messages, remember once we run this code, what's going to happen is we're going to go through, connect to NAS. There's my main, connect to NAS. If we can connect, well, we'll fatal and if not, we'll defer closing. And then I initialize count and I go and I start receiving messages. Now, this is going to pass through computer's register or subscribe to this message with this callback but it's gonna proceed through here and stop here and wait for one minute. I'm saying I don't know how long we should wait, you know, um, how many messages we're gonna process in one minute. So instead, what I wanna do is do this. I'm gonna say that so long as we're receiving messages, um, because I'm doing a count, right? If the value of count is changing, then we're receiving messages. If count doesn't change for like five seconds, that means that oh, there's a pause or we, we have not received messages on that five five seconds, sorry, not five minutes. So if we have a pause for five seconds without receiving a message, then we can exit at that point. And that's pretty easy to do, right? We can simply say that let's um, check, you know, say for, just keep going forever and forever. We can get the old value of count so all colon equals count, which get the current value of count. And notice I have this thing that's updating count and I have this guy that's reading count. So some of you might be thinking, oh, you know what? Um, 
that could be a problem because, you know, what if the value of count is being updated while I'm trying to read it? Well, no need to worry about that because since count is an integer value, it's going to be updated in an atomic way. If that doesn't make sense to you, basically know that our, for the processor, it's just going to update the value. So I'm going to either read a consistent value. I'm going to read it before it got updated. Or I'm going to read it after it got updated. Now, if it was something like a complex number that was made up of two other values, like basic, like um, float 64 or something, then I could potentially read in correct value. But here, incrementing the integer or any basic numeric type that the processor supports is going to be atomic. So I don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to read it and then I'm going to sleep for five seconds, like I said. So I'm going to sleep for five seconds, All right? Read the value, sleep for five seconds. And if after I finish sleeping for five seconds, if the old value is equals to the, um, is still equals to count, that means count hasn't changed, okay? If all count and the current count value are the same after five seconds, it means it hasn't changed, which means in that five seconds that I was sleeping, I did not receive any new messages. So at that point, what I should do is just ex um, unsubscribe, right? I should unsubscribe because I don't, I'm not, I don't want any more messages at this point. And then I can break out of this loop, okay? So. I can do like a return or something like that. So I can do a um, break out of this loop. Now, another clean way of doing this is since I have a subscription, I can say once I unsubscribe, I can defer the unsubscribe to make sure to whenever I'm leaving this program that, you know, I'm going to unsubscribe properly. So something like this. And I'm missing a return here. So then there we go. So once I have this now, before I my program exit, what I can do is print out how many messages I've received. So I can say processed percentage V messages. Okay. And new line. And then I can say count. And so this will tell you how many tell me how many messages I've processed. So I haven't done anything more than really just say. I can, I'm going to exit if I don't receive messages for five seconds. Okay. So let's clean up here and let's do go run and let's do subscription and let's do go that main. And now if I let this wait after five seconds, it should tell me how this program is going to exit and I've received zero messages. So you can see process zero messages and this program took about five seconds. So great. That seems to be working now. From here, I could do NATS and I could do publish. I could do something like this and I could do count of 100,000 messages. I could send those messages. And so if this guy is waiting there and then let's just send those 100,000 messages, I can see it's receiving it and this is moving along. And so let's open this up a little bit. And uh, I don't know if we want to open this up the way or not. But yeah, not sure why not. And so you can see this send 100,000 messages in 11 seconds. This guy is going to wait five seconds and then notice it said it got a hundred thousand messages. So all the messages I send from this NATS publish, some were delivered. Well, don't let's start celebrating just yet. Let's go to our go code and let's look here. Here we are sending and we have essentially reproduced the NATS publish thing where we're going to send, I think it's about a hundred thousand messages also. Um, because we have one e to the five here, so 100,000 messages. We're just gonna sit in a loop and just try to publish as quickly as possible. Just send those messages. Um, and so let's go back here and prepare to receive our message, you know, subscribe to it. And so we can do go run, publish, and we can do main and go. And again, same 100,000 messages, except we're gonna send it from go code. This guy's waiting and let's send that. And we can see this finish already. They sent a hundred thousand messages. We can print out to see that that's the case. But how many messages did I receive? Only 70,000. So a good 76,000. So a good 20 something thousand messages are missing, were, weren't received. But I sent them. I know I sent them. I can prove it by going to here FMT, print F, and then said um, sent 
or publish rather, no, publish, publish percent this V messages, right? And a new line, and then I can do um, I, well, okay. So I is here, so maybe let's do um, I colon equals zero up there, and then let's do take this out of there. And then so, because otherwise the I is scoped to this for loop. And so we want to be able to see what's the value of I after we finish. And so after 100,000, we should see 100,000 there. Okay, so let's do this again. And this is just to ensure that we are sending our 100,000 messages. So let's clean up our screen, clean up here. And we're ready to send to the subscribe. Let's subscribe, let's publish. And there we go. This finished and it says I sent 100,000 messages. There we go. So proof we sent 100,000 messages. Here, let's see how many messages we receive. Ah, 76, a little bit, 77. But again, about 20,000 messages are not were not received. And it wasn't because um, our subscriber wasn't subscribed. It was subscribed all this time. It didn't unsubscribe um, until it waited for five seconds. So it's just that Nats could not push the messages to our subscriber as fast as they came in from that publisher. You see the command line Nats publish was a little bit slower. It was sending the message sort of a little bit slower so we could keep up, our subscriber could keep up. But this goes to show you that if you have a publisher that's sending tons and tons of messages rather quickly, that maybe your subscriber may not be able to keep up. And we're not doing anything here in our subscription with these messages other than receive them or print them out. Imagine if we were actually doing some processing on it. Then, you know, like if we receive a message, we, we pretended that we were processing on processing that message, time that sleep, for example. And we let's just go, say that oh, we're randomly sleeping for like five milliseconds or 10 milliseconds, then we're gonna be losing even more messages. And here we're not even sleeping, doing any kind of processing, okay? So, how do we fix this? Well, what we can do is we can look at the message that we receive from NAS. And if we go and we do MSG and we type that, we can see the data. Okay, we've been using that. And we also have this thing called reply, which is a string. We have sub, which is the subscription. We have the subject, which we know already when we've printed, oh, this is the subject on which the message came in. Then we have this message that's called response, and it says response allow a convenient way to respond to requests in service-based subscription. What does this mean? Is that what we can do is reply to a message that wants the reply, right? So we can reply to our request, essentially. So remember, we can publish a message or we can um, and then that just sort of get delivered into the system and then we hope for the best. And that says, oh, I do at most once delivery. But from our publisher, we want to have some guarantee that the message we sent was received. So what we're going to do in our publisher is say, and see that I want to send a request instead of just publish a message. And you can see request will send a request payload and deliver the response message or an error, including a timeout. So we can say, we wanna send a message, right, to the same topic. So just as before, we can say events that old is the topic we wanna to send to. We're gonna send the same message just as before. The only difference now, we're gonna say we want to get an acknowledgement and we're willing to wait a certain time for the acknowledgement. Let's do time that, um, let's do one second time, time that second. So let's wait one second to get acknowledgement for our message. Now, if you recall, um, da, 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 let me see, what did I uh, mess up here? So that, 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 oh, this needs to go with. So if we look here, we can see that oh, the re it says the request will send a message and get a response. So this NATS message is the response that we're gonna get back from our subscriber. But we don't care what that message that we actually get back. Um, we just care to see if there was an error. And so if there's an error, what we're gonna do is we're going to say, well, I'm sending a message. I'm gonna wait at up to one second to get a response. And if you know, error not equals to nil, then I'm going to log rust that fatal 
f basically saying request failed let's just do request failed for message number whatever right and then i print out what that error message is and so i is going to be the message and remember our message go from zero and the error message so that's it okay so let me close this up so you can see the code fully so that's all i did was don't do publish do request and send i'm going to wait one second if i can't get a response on the message i sent then um i'm going to fail okay all right um let's see uh oh i can change it from fail to error f and then i'll just go um break here to get out of this for loop and so we can see how many messages fail before um when we try to send request so let's go back here and this guy is going to again be subscribing this is going to be our updated publisher and so we requested a message oh um seems like um save this and see uh where is this oh i i didn't do anything here so let's do this well, i haven't changed my subscriber yet so let's do this so this guy's running there and then we send this and notice we got the first message we got message zero because that's the idea of the message and here we says request fail for message zero now this guy waited five seconds but this guy failed after waiting one second and so it will publish zero messages but remember we're counting from from zero so it's basically we sent one message and it did not get a response for it and it timed out that's the error message here and that's timeout so the way to fix this is our subscriber need to acknowledge that it got the message. You see, our subscriber got the message here, but it didn't acknowledge it. And the server or the sender rather, or publisher wants it to be acknowledged. So if we look at a message again, MSG, we can see there's the data, there's reply, and a reply is just a string. But what reply really is, is <laughs> what reply is, um, the reply is the mailbox or the topic upon which we should send back our response. So if we go here, um, they don't have any description of it, but basically this reply is a topic that not to generate for us to send back our response to. So, but remember, there's also this convenient message called respond which would take care of just sending back a message for us. So for, for us, we can just simply say our message or our reply to the request is just got it, right? Now on our service publisher side, we don't actually care about it, right? Remember on the publisher side, when we get a response box, for a response back from our request, we just throw it away. But if we had read that message, that data, we would see, we'd say get, got it. But we don't really care so how do we know when we should send a reply a response not every message needs a response well if the message that reply field this guy is not equals to an empty string it means that all the sender or the publisher of this message is sending a request if it's empty they're not sending anything. Now, I'll leave it for you, to you to print out the value of reply um, each time, you know, in, from in, within this message to see what it is. So here we go. If reply is not equals to empty string, that means I should send a response. And I could simply say, you know, the connection to NAT that publish to this reply box or topic and my message i could do the exact same thing that the publisher here is doing was doing in this line here because this is going to just be a string on which i should send my reply to but by calling this method it takes care of everything for us right it's it's sending it back you see it's doing publish to m that reply and then the data so it's taking care of things for us so why not use that okay so let's do it now our subscriber has been updated to send a reply if one is requested and so 
Now let's go back here, clean up the screen. Our subscriber is ready. Our publisher is ready. And so let's go wait. Let's go send and now notice our publisher is happy because it's getting a reply for its messages. Now things are not as fast as before. Of course it makes sense. It's not gonna be as fast because now we have to take the time to reply and our sub publisher has to get that reply first before it send the next message. But look what happens. It sent a hundred thousand messages. And the only reason it sent a hundred thousand is because it got acknowledgement for all hundred thousand and our subscriber receive 100,000 messages. So no messages were lost in the system. So even though NAS by default does at most once delivery, when you do pub sub, if you're doing request response, then you can guarantee. And there are many more other patterns that are very, very cool about this. In that, like I said, the publisher didn't have to wait for just one response. It could, remember if it sends out a message and there are multiple subscribers each one of them could re respond to that message when they get it so the publisher could in theory get multiple re responses for any one message but it could say oh i don't care about more than one or only one the first five or any, any other sort of thing which we're not going to talk about but i just wanted to show you this just in case you decide to build a solution and then realize that oh you were having missing data uh, messages now you can see how you can address that using request response instead. If you must process every message that was published to the system, you wanna be doing request response. If you really don't care about processing every message, you could possibly miss some messages, then you wanna do publish subscribe. Okay, so that's it. I don't wanna make this video too long. The next video, I'm going to be looking at something called Go Fiber, which is a web framework. So I will see you in the next video. Take care, stay safe, and have a great rest of the day. Thanks for your time as always. Bye.